So, if you look at this predictive DNA test, well, you know what? Let's be a little bit honest here. We all a little bit obsessed with ourselves. With the arrival of this easy, you know, you know, this easy, affordable genetic testing kits, people thought it might be fun to find out where their ancestors are from. But now, people are using this sort of determine the risk of certain disease or even determine what their diet should be. But are these things actually useful? Do they actually help us? So, let's look firstly at this predictive genetic testing for cancer. Now, a lot of people know that cancers tend to run in a family. People have these ideas of the real risk of cancers being written into their gene. You know, they might have this view of like cancers is being unavoidable. It's something they can't escape, especially if they know that they have genetic risk for cancer. Now, cancer does have a genetic lean, but it's not the most important factors, you know. The most important factors at place are things like your diet and your lifestyle, all right? So only, only about 5 to 10% of cancer are actually caused directly by inherent genetic defeat, okay? And the next thing is that cancers tend to run in a families because as we know, when you live together with a family, you actually share the same place and are exposed to the same harmful substance. And you tend to have the similar diet, similar meals as well. And you tend to have a similar lifestyle. Those are all sorts of factors that tends to be the same among the families of the people. So, if someone inherits a gene that made them more likely to develop cancer, does that mean they will definitely get cancer? No, okay, it's no. That's, that's not the case, okay? There's two things that we want to look at. Just because you get the gene, doesn't mean that the gene will play a significant role in your life. The two things is to keep in mind. First is penetrate and express CTVT. Penetrate is talking about how often a gene actually lead to something. So incomplete or reduced penetrates means, means that not everyone who has a gene will develop the disease. You can think as like this, an on-off switch of the genes, okay? So it's either on and it's relevant, or it's off and it doesn't have impact on your life. Expressive activities is the extent to which a gene is expressed or sown. Let's take an easy example. Let's take a look at uh, dog breeds. Dogs of certain breeds can share the same genes, but the difference is how it oppress. For example, if you have dogs and they have the genes of brown fur, you might have one dog with really dark brown fur, another dog with a spot of brown fur, and then the third dog with light brown fur. And when they are the same, they, they all have the same gene for brown fur, the difference is how that gene is expressed. Okay? Alright, so keep these two in mind. Just because you have the genes doesn't mean that you will get the disease. And it doesn't mean that your body will express it in the same way. So you can think just like the on and off switch, on off switch. You know, there's something that need to turn on a gene. And oftentimes, this triggers to turn that switch on. It can be things that come from your environment. All right? So just take a look at another disease. For example, autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease can actually happen at adulthood. 
not always in the childhood. For example, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease that commonly happens in adulthood. And this disease, they often have some sort of triggers, like a viral infection or an injury or some other stress to the bodies. That sort of triggers, that triggers this disease to happen. And people might think it's okay to get sick because doctors, well, we have all sort of way of fixing our fixing yourself through doctors right now, right? But that is not a necessary, the best part to rely on doctors to fix you after the fact. Because there is a lot of things can triggers of this disease in your body. And, and this thing can be things like medication as well. So as always, the best cause of action is to try to avoid getting sick to begin with, right? We want to prevent getting sick. So it is important to nourish your body, nourish your immune system, and just prevent it from ever happening to begin with. Now, does this test cover all genetic variants? No, only a few genetic variants are tested. For example, there are some companies out there now that will say that they can test for variations of breast cancer gene, all right? So they might say, oh, you know what? We will test for you these genes. So if you get a report that say everything is negative, then you will feel really relieved, right? You feel, oh, oh, oh my gosh. This means that my risk for breast cancer is normal. It's like zero. But that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is okay. It just means that the gene they tested for the gene they tested for were negative and they don't test for everything, alright? So it's only saying that once, it's only saying that the one we tested were negative. But the one they didn't test it for, that could be positive. And you could never know. So if you decide to get a DNA tested for medical reason, then you should be working together with your doctors to see what sort of genetic testing is best and for a more complete understanding of what the result will show. Critical genetic tests will go into much more detail. For example, the commercial test is a bit like reading a few letters in every chapter of books, whereas a cl clinical test will read every single letter often thousands of times and will even check to see if they have chapter missing or chapter duplicates, right? So genetic testing still has its place in the medical field. For example, genetic testing for Huntington's disease is done because of someone has a gene. They will develop a disease. Other tests, such as genetic testing for breast cancer, can also be done. But the results aren't as clear-cut, and you should be discussing with your, together with your doctors. Now, if you look at this, you know, genetic testing test, who should consider this genetic testing test? Now, you should consider them for cancers that is diagnosed at a young age or as an inference, all right? So for people who have cancer diagnosed at a very, very young age, for some, some often time, a lot of these inherited cancer types are sometimes that happens at a very young age because it's genetic. So it's written into their gene. So if they do have, do have this at a very young age, they can test and see if it's genetic. And if it's genetic, then you might have to head a start on their relative, uh, their, for, for example, for their sibling, someone that close to them. 
If they have several different types of cancer occurring in the same person, then, then you might say, oh, you know what? They might have a mutation there because there are some types of genetic mutation that will increase your risk of getting cancer. But oftentimes, these people might have several different types of cancers occurring at the same time. Or if you have several first degree relatives that come down with the same types of cancers, then again, you might go for this genetic testing. But it is something that you should be discussed with a medical professional, all right? So if you have a positive result on this cancer test, especially if you are one of those commercial testing, then you have to take it with a grain of salt, okay? Don't take it seriously. You can't let it cause you all sorts of anxieties. It's all about probabilities, all right? So the report that these companies turn out can be super misleading. It might be scary to see in the report that you have an increased risk of cancer. However, what the report doesn't tell you is that the risk of the cancer is normally something like 0.1%. So if you have an increase of 10 times, then that may make it 0.1%, which is still a very tiny chance, right? This test can also show false positive, especially for the rare genetic variants. For example, if a genetic variant was only found in one in a million people, then you do the maths. It is more likely that a positive result that you get is an error. That is not an actual positive result, all right? So, an independent clinical lab have actually looked into a lot of this result from this commercial genetic test. And they found that about 40% of them were actually false positive. All right, you got that? So, just don't let this thing give you unnecessary anxieties, okay? It's just not worth for your mental health. The next thing is also a negative result can also be harmful in different ways. Okay, like I mentioned before, these commercial tests, they only test for few variants. They don't test for, for them, for all, all of them, all right? So it's, it's a bit like saying, you know what? On this one meter stretch of road, I can guarantee that you will not get into car accidents, all right? But that's only the 100 meter stretch of road, okay? They are not telling, telling you that the 200 meters miles, there's a sinkhole that you don't know about that, okay? So it's only about these certain variants. They can say it's negative. And it might give people like this sort of sense of false, false assurance, you know? They might think, oh, I wouldn't have this risk. So they might not take preventive measures that they might have otherwise taken. For example, they might be less diligent about getting health check. Just as like a mammogram, they are looking for breast cancer, just simple mammogram. And if they don't take it serious to do the test, they might miss a real cancer that has developed, all right? So a negative result doesn't mean zero risk, okay? It's not mean zero risk. And a positive result doesn't necessarily mean that you will end up with cancers, okay? So can you change your genes by eating and living well? I wish. Unfortunately, we can't change our genes. What we have is what we start with. There's a lot of promising research out there about gene editing, especially, if, especially for specific disease like cystic fibrosis. But that is still very new stuff 
and it's very under braking. So far, we still don't have the technologies to be able to change our genes on the widespread levels, all right? So if you think about it, for genetic, you know, for the cancer mutations, a lot of time, it's multiple different mutations working together to increase your risk of cancers, all right? It's not just one, it's a lot of them. But for other disease, like sick taste fibrosis, it is a mutation of one single gene, you know? One thing that can fix. So, you know, they can work on fixing on this one thing. Even then, it's still something that they are working on. So we are not there yet. Maybe, maybe in futures we can do it, but we are not there yet. So it is not possible for us at the moment, currently. Now, it's not possible, okay? However, remember when I said that gene has like a switch, on-off switch. We can try to control other risk factors. For example, our lifestyle and our diet. We can try to protect ourselves against cancers by helping stopping these cancers from mutating in the first place, okay? Which means, number one, we have to try to avoid carcinogens. There's a lot of carcinogens that are present with, the, with our core lifestyle. For example, tobacco smoke is one, a poor diet is one, mycotoxins, char foods. So about all of this, it's all about trying to avoid this risk. But some risks we can't avoid, all right? And for those risks that we can't avoid, what we can do is try to equip our body's own cells to defeat against these cancer cells. So as much as we try to avoid every single carcinogens in the world, it is not possible. So we want to take care of our bodies. We want to take care of our immune system because our immune system is our defense system. If our immune system is healthy and is healthy and strong, it can fight and eliminate cancer cells before they grow into a problem. A healthy diet to support our immune system also help protect us against cancers. You know? Plant nutrients contain wonderful nutrients called phytochemicals and polysaccharides. And all of these phytochemicals and polysaccharides, they help protect our bodies in different ways. For example, phytochemicals can help us to stop some of the many processes that may lead to cancers. Polysaccharides can help our immune system. It can help our immune cells work on its way of trying to defeat those foreign inventors and trying to defeat those mutated cells as well. And this plant, they also contain a strong antioxidants, you know, that can help protect our cells against DNA damage. Yes. So all of these things, they're sort of working together. All of these parts work together to help reduce our risk of cancers and also keeping our immune system healthy. Now, eating healthy means consuming less carcinogen and consuming more plant foods to help support our immune system. We don't have control over our genes, but we do have control over our eating, all right? By eating healthy, we also have a greater population of healthy, normal cells, okay? So it is a multi-pronged approach. Just by eating healthy, we are tackling so many risk factors and so many problems all at once. And it is something that we can do it all together. But in the effort to trying to eat healthy, 
a lot of people will turn to the DNA best diet. Will you succeed or fail in your new diet? Will exercise be more important than your food choices? If you want to lose weight, a lot of people will turn to their genes for the answers to their dieting questions. Now, this is not anything new. People have been doing this for years and just in the past, DNA tests were super expensive. So, so they did other things instead. Like they do it like your blood types or your star signs, which might be free or cheap. But now we can test our DNA by mail. So a lot of people are turning, are turning to do it instead of doing other stuff. But do our genes determine our response to diet? Not necessary. The research into DNA and it links to different aspects of our lifestyle is actually still very new. Still quite new. Yes, there's been major breakthroughs, but in the really weird way, DNA and its link for the things like dieting is actually super complex. There's a lot of things that we still don't know about. Now, it's, it is obvious that not everyone will respond to the same diet in the exact same way. After all, we are not the exact same people. So a lot of people think, you know what? Instead of trying the hard way of just trying out a diet and eating healthy, they just want the cheat sheet. They want something to tell them exactly what to do. But even that, it doesn't really work. If you look at these predict studies, researchers, they look into 700 identical twins and 400 non-twins. And they do the evaluations among other things as well. The rest and fall of blood sugars and blood fat after eating varieties kind of foods. And they found that, you know, different people respond very differently to the same dietary input. So there's no one dietary approach that's going to work the best for everyone. Now you look at this, you know, if this difference were genetically driven or, you know, due to your genes, then we would expect the identical twins to respond in the same way, right? But they didn't. The genetics appears to account for less than one third of the subjects' insulin and triglyceride response or their blood fat response. The specific ratio of fat and carbohydrate in the diet were also not strongly predictive. Other factors like their sleep habits, exercise, stress, or even their gut microbiomes appear to play a much bigger role in their individual's response to their diet. So that's bad news for the company that sells all these tests, but it's a really good news for the rest of us because it means that it's not written in our gene and we can change it in our control. We can control what we eat. We can control how much exercise we do, how much we sleep, how we manage our stress, even our gut microbiome. All of these things are within our control. We can influence these things to help to reduce our risk and to help make it easier to manage our weight. All right? So DNA testing is not a good guide for weight loss. All right? Research published in JAMA by researchers from Stanford University Medical School investigates over 609 overweight adults over the 12 months. They split them into two groups, a low-fat diet and a low-carbohydrate diet. They look at their genes involved in fat and carbohydrate metabolism. 
So they look at this diet and then they sort of compare it to what genes these people had. And they found that there's no difference in weight loss between the two groups. It didn't, it didn't seem a matter what gene they have or their genotypes. It just didn't count, didn't put into account for their weight loss. When they try either a low carb or low fat diet, the result actually saw a wide variety of blood response to the same meal. Whether or not they contain carbohydrate or fat. For example, some participants have a really rapid and prolonged increase of their blood sugar and insulin, which are linked to weight gain and diabetes. Others have fat levels that peak and hang out in the blood after meal, which link to developing heart disease. This difference was not due to their genes. Identical twins in their studies who share the same genes, they have really different response. So there, there is no interaction between the DNA and the diet when it comes to these things, okay? So our diets cannot be matched to our genotypes. Our response to our diet is much more complicated than just coming down to our genes. There's other things like gut microbiomes, food combination, sleep, exercise, all sorts of these things play a much larger role. All right, for example, the researchers, they look at identical twins again. And they found that these identical twins, they have different response to the same food. For example, you know, in response to a sugary drink, one twins might have more, more than doubles the spike of sugar levels than the other twins. Or you know, if they ate a normal muffin, it might have the same thing. One twins had a spike of sugar level and the others didn't. But when they switch the food and they switch it to high fiber muffin, then the response were more similar. So this researcher believe that this different response from diet from twins might be explained by their gut microbiome. Although the twins have identical genes, they are genetically similar, their gut microbiomes are not similar, okay? So a large majority of their gut microbiome is different between the identical twins. All right, and it it's also mean that you know, just because they have the same gene doesn't mean that the gene they they are expressed in the same way. For example, identity twins with genes for lactose intolerance might end up with one twins being lactose tolerant and the other twins be able to enjoy other dairy treats they like. All right, so it's really, really depend on all sorts of factors. There's no evidence that we can use genes to determine which food we should or should not eat. Now, genetics play a very minor role in determining how rich we respond to food. So this simple genetic test claim to determine the right diet for your genes, but they are pretty effective and misleading, okay? If you do a dive deep into these different genetic tests available for you to buy in the market, you will find that even between them, different companies, you know, they will, they will split up different results, all right? They don't have an agreement on which genes mean what, okay? So, you can do the same test yourself. You can send the DNA to multiple different companies and you will get different diet plans and different advice back. But for a lot of people, a lot of this personalized guidance from diets by DNA company, it's just a repair cache. 
It's just a common sense nutritional advice that we all heard about time and times again because it works. Scientists still don't know enough about these diet gene interactions to be able to offer what type of personalized advice that would be actually helpful for dieter. So what is helpful is advice like eating your vegetables and fruits, no matter what your genotype is, all right? Because this is advice that has been time proven again and again and again, and even supported by research, all right? If you want to manage a healthy weight, the best way to do is to have a healthy diet, full of all sorts of plant foods, full of all sorts of vegetables and fruits, all right? So avoid any companies that offer predictions like this. For example, have you ever seen companies telling their client that they can tell them, you know what? What sport their child will excel in? You know, or saying, you know, like your perfect diet or other things. All right, using this DNA result to guess this kind of information, it's really just a guesswork at best. So from now, just follow the nutritionist advice that have been tried and tested and eat a wide variety of plant foods. Okay? I'm Kim Law. Thank you for watching and subscribe our channels, click on the bell, share this information to your friends and families because we know knowledge is power. See you next time.